Welcome back guys. I know that uh, it's been a little bit. I know everybody out there has probably forgotten how to flatten their backs and use their lats. No forms have been checked for two weeks and we apologize for that. Uh, we were pretty busy with nationals and stuff, but we're gonna make an extra effort to make our form check Fridays a little more entertaining from now on. We're gonna film in some cool locations around town and uh, try to do some cool stuff with it. So getting right to the thick of it, we're gonna go through 10 today as opposed to the usual eight because we're behind. So I'm gonna start off here with Tristan Volpe. Now, Tristan sent some videos of his deadlifts and some videos of his squats. Um, you'll notice the dogs are eating sticks behind me here, so just uh, ignore that or focus on that because it's pretty cool. So Tristan sent some videos of some squats and some deadlifts, all heavy singles. Now, I went through a bunch of his deadlifts and he's got half of his deadlifts where he does a really good job of setting his lats, setting his back and, and creating tension at the bar before he pulls off the floor. And the other half of his videos, the other two, he uh, doesn't set any tension at all into his back, doesn't set his shoulders whatsoever. He says here he's, he's fallen to the trap of sort of overanalyzing his lifts. So he feels like he's done too much cueing and too much focusing on the technique and as a result has suffered and not gotten as strong as possible. So the first thing uh, that I'm gonna mention, Tristan, is sometimes we just need to remember as powerlifters, we just need to push. Like we just need to push or pull in this case and just lift the weight and try to turn the brain off a little bit. I definitely think that in the videos where you're setting your back better, and I'll get Dylan to show some of these for comparison, uh, but the videos where you're setting your back better are better deadlifts. You might not feel as strong there because you're thinking about more, but let's try to limit it to one or two cues maybe at a time. I just want you to set your back, tension into the bar, and just push. Like just push, pull hard. Try to move the weight. Try not to think about too, too much stuff. Um, and then also in your squats, the only thing there is they're just a little bit inconsistent. Now he says he's got some trouble with his uh, getting his shoulders into good position and wondering if I have any cues or tips for that. The biggest thing I can recommend is just practice getting under the bar. Before you even squat an empty bar that day, get under the bar four or five times. On your off days before you bench, get under the bar a couple times, get the bar settled, try to stretch the shoulder blades back and forth. The other thing that I like to do that helps a little bit is just grab a band, set your shoulders and do some band pull-aparts. I see a lot of people do band pull-aparts, but they just kind of jerk the bar or the, the band around like this. Now, I think there needs to be a little bit more intention than that. So what I like to try to do is set your shoulder blades and pull apart. So when I say set your shoulder blades, I mean retract them towards your spine and depress them towards your butt, the same way they're gonna be in the squat. So you can go through some band exercises like that to stretch and open up. Also set the shoulder blades. You can do some banded dislocations back around the head uh, and that kind of stuff should help a little bit. The biggest thing with the squat is just try to turn your brain off a little bit. Your technique actually looks really, really good. Uh, and I can tell you're a little bit bound up in the upper back and stuff, but you're not losing it forward. So just try to turn your brain off, stop thinking so much and just squat. That's kind of the antithesis of Form Check Friday. But in some cases, I think that's what's necessary. So next up, we got a guy named Kankan, I believe, Kankan. -Can. Uh, but anyways, the only issue here, you're actually doing a, a pretty darn good job of setting your back and putting tension into the bar before you pull. I just would like to get you to set your hips down a little further. So I want you to bend your legs a little, keep your butt back behind you and just sit your butt down so you can use your quads a little bit more off the floor. Other than that, honestly, like you're, you're doing really great stiff legged deadlifts. I just think if we drop your hips a little bit and get a bit uh, more of an upright torso, you're gonna have a lot more power overall. So next up, we got a bench video from a guy named Welly. Now, Welly says he's feeling like he's losing tightness in the bottom of his bench. Now, if you look at it, it looks like he's kind of breaking it up into two distinct movements. So he comes down, he sinks, he rests on his chest a little bit, and then he kind of dips down and then back up. You can see his head lift slightly off the bench when he does that. One thing I think, Welly, is I think you're kind of making it into two distinct movements. What I would recommend for you to think about is trying to make it into one continuous movement. So the act of drawing it down is like loading a spring. You're, you're creating all that elastic energy and pulling the bar in, and then you're gonna hold for a second and push out of that same tension that you're using on the way down, as opposed to coming down, loosening, and then trying to create more tension to drive it off the chest. I want you to try to use the tension that you're getting lowering the bar to bring it back up. So try to maintain that same tightness around your shoulder blades and through the lats on the way down, and then on the way back up without having that sort of lapse in contraction and that lapse in tightness. Next up, we have a video from Wern. Wern is from Thailand, which is really cool. So Wern basically, he's got a pretty darn good squat here. Uh, the only thing that I'm seeing 
as an issue is it, and especially you see this as the set wears on but he starts to get looser and looser in the hole and he starts to tip forward and tip forward and tip forward so he's kind of losing tightness kind of squishing in the bottom uh, the first rep not so much second rep a little bit more third fourth fifth gets worse and worse and as a result you see his torso angle get more increasingly more uh, declined or, or whatever inclined De increasingly more tipped forward out of the bottom as the set goes on so the biggest thing I would do is I would just practice some pause squats Warren. I don't think that it's necessarily a lack of tightness or anything I think it might just be practice of the movement and creating some strength in the bottom so pause squats and pin squats can be really good at solving this exact problem where you're squishing in the bottom and having trouble maintaining tightness throughout your full range of motion. So let's try to get some of those into your programming if we can and work on becoming more comfortable in that bottom position. It looks to me like you're trying to almost skip through that. Maybe there's a bit of a psychological thing where it's like, oh crap, the bottom is, is a little bit more psychologically intimidating and that could be causing some of that rushing and some of that uh, lapse of tightness like we talked about with Welly there. But same kind of thing, I just want you to practice some pauses, some pin squats there and that should help a fair bit. So number five here comes from a guy named Mo. Mo's from Dubai, also super cool to see tons of uh, submissions coming in from all over the globe. And Mo's doing some deadlifts here. Uh, again, Mo, we got a lot of the basics down, looking pretty good. The biggest thing, the biggest issue that I'm seeing is just that the shoulders are a tad bit in front of the bar. So as you come off the floor, that shoulder being in front of the bar is actually pulling you out further and the bar is getting a little bit out in front of you. So what I want you to do, looks like you're doing a good job of setting your back and creating tension in your lats. I just want you to try and get those shoulders sunk a little bit more into your lats. Like you're trying to pull your shoulder blade down your lats, like you're trying to sink your shoulder blade and shorten your torso a little bit. I think that's probably the biggest thing that I can offer you uh, and that should create a lot better starting position for those pulls. Next up. We got a video from Tibor from the Netherlands. This is a very multicultural form check Friday today. Um, and Tibor is doing some squats here. So Tibor says he's a tall guy. He often feels kind of awkward squatting because his, lim his limbs are so long. Uh, and you can definitely tell he's got a really wide stance, but it doesn't look, like if you look at it in, in comparison to the rack, it's really wide. But if you look at it in comparison to his leverages, it's, it's probably an adequate stance. So really the only issue I'm seeing here, Tibor, uh, and you have a great squat, is that as you come out of the bottom, we're getting that classic sort of knees shooting back. And that's causing the hips to come back behind us. It's causing your torso to sort of pitch forward a little bit. So what I want you to think about is I want you to think about keeping your knees over your toes as you change directions in the bottom of the squat. So try not to let that weight shift towards the heel. Try and keep the weight right in the middle of the foot, a little bit more towards the toes than you are now. We never want to be on the toes, but a little bit more towards the toes than we are right now because it looks like you're way back on the heels. So as you change directions in the bottom of your squat, try to keep that weight midfoot, try to keep those knees forward over the toes, and that should help keep you a lot more upright. And again, you can see as the set wears on, we see that vault come through more and more. So use that cue, that should help. Next up, we have Ryan Carter. Uh, video of his squat, he's been struggling with depth. Not sure if it's the camera angle or not. He tried switching to high bar, but low bar feels much better. Uh, review the depth and give him any pointers. The biggest thing that, I, and it doesn't look like you have any mobility restriction per se. It looks like everything's in a pretty good spot. It just looks like you, you kind of just need to squat deeper. And maybe this is just a psychological thing, but there's a couple things we can do to help you get there. Now I can sit here and say just squat deeper, but maybe that doesn't quite click. So what I want you to do is I want you to try and A, we can try to play with your stance to get you a little bit more depth. So if you're wide, try bringing your stance in a little bit. If you're narrow, try bringing your stance out a little bit. If you're a moderate stance, try both. Try a little bit wider, try a little bit narrower and see if that helps you get any better depth in the bottom there. The other thing, and I have a lot of my athletes, uh, some of my athletes do this uh, specifically when they start to try and find out exactly where that depth is, is I see there's a ton of blocks around you. So what I would, I think those are blocks. Those look like bricks. Anyways, if you have some boxes or blocks, stack those up behind you, take an empty bar, go to full depth. Uh, this is maybe an inch and a half or so high. Uh, it's kind of hard to see with this lighting and with uh, the black on black that you're wearing but we do need to get a fair bit deeper. So I want you to take an empty bar or like 135, 70 kilos, whatever it is, and just get to depth, film it, try to get a box to exactly that height, 
and then you're going to try to squat to that box every time. The other thing you can do is you can squat to pins. That should help you get better depth. But I feel like the box is a better indicator because that's actually where your butt's traveling. Sometimes with a pin squat, you can kick your butt back more, allow your torso to, to, to pitch forward more, and that can get the bar to the depth, or that can get the bar to the pins without you getting to depth. Uh, so let's try some box squats, and honestly, just lighten it up and practice getting deeper. Practice some pause squats, rock bottom. So next up, we have a submission from Eden Thompson, and Eden's doing some squats here. Honestly, almost everything about these look great. It looks like we're, get, we're hitting that sticking point really, really hard though. What I'd like for you to try and do is actually cut your depth a tiny, tiny bit so you can stay a little bit tighter. It looks like you're doing a really good job of staying upright. Some reps are a little bit better than others, but with the depth that you're going to, we're losing a little bit of positioning, we're losing a little bit of tightness. So I think if we sacrifice a little bit of depth for a little bit of tightness, that'll help us get through that sticking point. The other thing, keep in mind and anticipate that sticking point. Anticipate yourself slowing down every rep and don't let it happen. Try to drive right through from the bottom and think about just moving that bar uh, with a little bit more speed through that sticking point. Number nine, we have Alex Alfaro. And I know this guy watches our YouTube. I think he commented recently and gave us shit for not having reviewed his video yet. So here you are, Alex. The only issue here, you're doing a really good job of setting your back, your starting position looks good. I just wanna see you pull a little bit more slack out of the bar. So as you set your position, I want you to actually engage your back against the bar to pull your shoulders tight, because you can hear it in the video, there's a little bit of a click as you start your deadlift, and that means that there wasn't tension on the bar before you pulled it. Now with heavier weights, when you pull like this, it's gonna kinda pull you out of position, the weight's gonna be a little bit of a shock to the body, but if you're set tight against the bar and you have more slack pulled out of the bar, you're gonna be able to better sort of anticipate the weight of the bar as it comes off the floor. Last, but not least, we have David Kaplinger and we have some deadlifts and some squats now the deadlift he's doing sort of a, a hybrid uh, sumoventional ed cohen kind of thing and honestly mechanically it looks really good on you your back's in a good position lats are set uh, your starting position's good everything's good the one thing i would think is that you can get your shoulders into a little bit of a better position and i think the only thing holding you back is your grip might be a tiny bit narrow now, because of this uh, sort of moderate stance, it might be forcing your hands narrow, in which case there's not really much you can do. But if you can, I'd like for you to try and get your, your hands out maybe a half inch to an inch wider, one or two finger widths, and that should help you set your back a little bit better on some of these poles. The squat, um, he's saying that he, he's trying to keep his back tight, but he finds the bar rolls on him a little bit. The only thing I'm seeing here uh, that could be causing that a little bit is just to try and control your descent a little bit more. It looks like you're kind of reaching a point and just dropping from about halfway. I'd like to try to see you uh, add a little bit of a tempo, slow things down just a tiny bit to allow yourself to be a little bit more consistent with your positioning out of the bottom. Uh, now, when we're inconsistent, that's when we can start to see the bar roll, we can start to see the back get loose, etc. So I want you to slow them down a little bit, a little bit more control into the hole and uh, that should help keep that bar from rolling around on you. That is it for this week, guys. We will be back on schedule soon. Um, I don't know what date we're at, otherwise I'd give you the update, but thanks for tuning in. I hope everybody's glad to have Form Check Friday back on track, and we will see you again next week.